faith. It's a very simple word. What is that definition? The Bible contains a clear definition with what we just read. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, but the conviction of things not seen. The conviction of things not seen. How can we have faith in something that we do not see? Because what we do is we see the temporary. We see the visible. We have confidence in what we can tangibly touch or what we can comprehend. But the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please Him. So how do we grasp faith? Simply put, the Bible's definition is faith is trusting in something that you cannot explicitly prove or see. When somebody does not understand Jesus or when somebody does not understand what God is all about, we have to be able to communicate to them about something that we have not tangibly seen, but we have experienced by the faith uh, we have in our Father, Jesus Christ. It is often through a very dimly doorway, through circumstances out of our control, through things that we go through that exercise our faith. When we don't know where to go, we don't know what to do, we have to have faith. When we bow on our knees before God and say, Lord, I am at my end. I am frustrated to the max. I need you. We're calling upon a Savior that we may not tangibly see, but we can physically, spiritually experience because we have faith in Him. But see, sometimes we put on our glasses. And sometimes our glasses are not faith glasses. I had, uh, about 10 years ago, I did the LASIK surgery. I was driving at night, and I couldn't see anything driving. I couldn't see anything at night. And when it was raining, the windshield wipers going on, I was getting headaches, and I was driving. And it was terrible. It was absolutely horrendous. So I went in there one day, and I asked to get the idea about the LASIK surgery. And, and uh, I did the LASIK surgery. It was awesome. I got to drive at night without glasses, without getting a headache. They said, yes, we can fix that part of your eyes. But we can't fix both parts of your eyes. I said, what do you mean you can't fix both parts of your eyes? I said, I can, show, I can give you your vision so you can drive a long ways. And I said, great, that's what I want. Until about two days later when I tried to read. <laughs> and I couldn't see anything. I was looking at my, my computer screen. I couldn't see anything. So I, I had a decision to make. Am I going to wear glasses? Am I going to wear a contact? I can't wear two contacts. So I'm doing this monovision thing. I got one contact in so I can read. And I got the other contact out so I can see you. And sometimes the one fights the other big time. But sometimes we have to put on our glasses. We're going to call them our faith glasses. Because sometimes when we want to see what's tangible, we do not see what's eternal. But what happens, sometimes before we put on our faith glasses, these three things take place. Sometimes we have blurry vision. In other words, I really don't know what God wants me to do. I don't know what he's asked me to do. I don't know what my purpose is. And sometimes because of the chaos in my life, I, I just get frustrated I get, I, get, I get headaches because I just don't know what to do. And I just get so frustrated. And the circumstances are out of my control. So the solution today is we have to start walking by faith. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, it says, We live by faith and not by sight. See, I believe part of the problem is in our culture and our Christian church today is we want to live by what we can see. We want to live by what we understand. We want to live by what I'm in control in. And if we live by faith, we have to live not what I am in control of, but what is God in control of? How can I understand what God wants for my life? How can I do that? I can, I can live tangibly. I can understand what I can comprehend. But what if my faith supersedes my understanding about what's tangible? That's when 2 Corinthians chapter 4 Verse 18, while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. 
See, we, we live our life for down here. But what God says, it's not down here that matters. What matters down here are relationships. What matters down here is our testimony. What matters down here is pointing people to the eternal. And the eternal is Christ. But we live for the applause of people. We live for the praise of understanding. But what we have to do, we have to live for the eternal. The faith journey. This faith journey is very difficult. So I want to ask you, what does a faith journey look like? There are three principles that a faith journey looks like, and we're all on a faith journey. Many of us struggle with faith. When I was a youth pastor, many times the, the kids would say, why doesn't God just show himself to everyone? If God would just show himself to everyone and God, everybody would see God, everybody would be saved because everybody would tangibly see God. But that's not the way God planned it. He says it is impossible to please him without faith. And faith is the substance of things I long for, I hope for. So everybody has to have their own faith. Everybody has to have their own salvation. My salvation isn't good for you or yours, mine. But what we must do is on this journey that we call faith, on this journey that we go through every day of our life, we have to train our eyes not to be focused on the temporary, but to be focused on the eternal. What does God want for my life? What is God doing within my life? The faith journey sometimes begins with a very difficult challenge. A very difficult challenge. I, I believe God never wants us to stay where we are. I believe the challenges of life motivate us and change us. I believe sometimes God puts challenges within our life for a very simple reason, and that's to knock us off center. It's so easy to become pl complacent. It's so easy to stay in the status quo. But sometimes very difficult times causes us to have faith. There's a scripture of a story found in Matthew chapter 15. And the scripture is, is when you read it, it's kind of an awkward scripture. But we have to remember that Jesus at this time, he was sharing his faith to the Jewish empire. And those outside of the Jewish empire, they have not, the Jews have not rejected him yet. And the Holy Spirit has not convicted us yet to go into all the world. So Jesus is right here. He's getting ready to, to, to go on a little vacation, to go rest for a while. And when he goes to a different city, he is recognized. And this lady that he is recognized by asked Jesus to do something for her. It's found in Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 and uh, about 25. Let's go to 21 and 22. Then Jesus went out from there and departed to a region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from the region and cried out to saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. They were getting ready to go to a, to a different city just to chill out for a little bit, just to rest. Like last week, uh, you guys gave me off last week, and I, I got a day off. And I had the most wonderful experience on last Sunday. I got to watch the Cowboys get beat. And I got to watch the Chiefs get beat. So my two favorite teams died. And I was like, I, like, I should have just stayed at work. I'd have had a much better time. But you know, sometimes you just have to get away. And that's what Jesus and the disciples were doing. They were going to a different city, and they were going to rest for a little bit. But when they went to a different city, Jesus was recognized by this woman. And this woman, her daughter, was demon-possessed. Now, if you have a child and you understand, if your child is going through, you will do anything within your power to get that child taken care of. You'll go to the ends of the earth to have that child taken care of. If you are going through a calamity, there's nothing that you will do that would stop you from doing whatever it takes to fix whatever you're going through. Sometimes we are unaware of our needs of faith until we face something that you cannot control. And this woman has going through something she could not control. She had no power to control this demon possessed within her daughter. So it may be your kids in your house, or it could be a sickness that you're going through, or financial frustration that you have. But you're going through something and you are at your wit's end. And I believe Jesus sometimes puts us at our wit's end 
when we have no control to do whatever we need to do. And at that point, he says, you find Jesus. And that's exactly what she did. She went and she found. How does your faith journey begin? How did your faith journey begin? Many of us have faith journeys that we could talk about for the last 10, 15, 20 years. But sometimes our faith journey is new beginning. Sometimes you're going through things right now that we have no control over and we don't know what to do and where to turn and we're struggling. We're struggling. We see the tangible. We see what we should do. We see what the hospitals say. We see what the doctors say. We see what the financial institutions will say. But have we talked to God? Have we started our faith journey? Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. But the second part of that journey is faith journey often gets worse before it gets better. Somebody give me an amen to that. You ever gone through the doctor and he gives you a diagnosis and he says this. He said, I can help you, but in order to help you, it's going to hurt you. I can give you pills to cover the symptoms, but before we can fix the symptoms, we've got to fix the problem. We go through marriage counseling and you come in and you have the utopia thing. Say, okay, we're going to the, the counselor and the counselor is going to help us out and we're going to be better. We're going to be better. And they go in there thinking everything's going to be great. The, the counselor is going to give them the magic pill. You take a pill for four days, you're going to be in love. <laughs> but you find out it don't work that way. You find out that the counselor says, you know what? It's not necessarily you. It may be you that have the problem. Well, she's the one that does all. No, 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 no. The symptom. Let's fix the problem. And when we go through problems, sometimes it gets worse before it gets better. It gets worse. And you're looking at your life right now and you're saying it can't get much worse than it is right now. It can't get any worse. The initial feeling is it's chaos. But we're looking temporal. We're looking at the physical. We're not looking at the spiritual. We're not looking at the eternal. We're not asking God to fix it. We're asking man to fix it. And when we ask man to fix it, we ask a, an institution to fix it. We're not asking God. And the only way that God's going to hold up is if we get on our knees and say, Lord, I need you. I don't know how you can fix me. I don't know why you're going to fix me. All I know is you can. And I don't understand it. But by faith, I'm going to say I can do it. By faith, I can understand it. But it gets worse. Before it gets better. Verses 23 and 24 of Matthew chapter 15. This is Jesus. But he answered her, not a word. You ever been there? <laughs> Lord, I need you. Lord, I cry out to you. Nothing changes. He seems like he's silent. Or he seems like he's distant. You seem like you're in a desert place and no one can help you. And his disciples came and urged him saying, send her away for she cries out after us. In other words, you feel that you're annoying. You feel like you're asking for help, but nobody's going to help. You feel like you're in need, but nobody cares. God doesn't care People are telling you to leave. You have no hope. It can't get any worse than that. You feel like you're all alone. But he answered and said, I was not sent except the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In other words, my mission right now, this is what Jesus is saying, my mission isn't to help you. My mission is to sh sh share my, my faith and my love and my salvation to the, to the Jewish region. And she said this, Additional feelings of being on God's path. The initial, I see God for the very first time. I understand what I want. Along with our faith journey, how do we feel? And how does our, how does our faith change us? When, when we feel like we can't go any longer, we feel like everything else is against us, how does it change us? How does it actually change the way that we feel? In the midst of the struggle... In the midst of the training, how does it make us feel? When we feel like God is distant, we feel like friends don't want to help us. The disciples even said, send her away. What do we do with that? We, looking, we are looking at the tangible. 
We're looking at the things that we can understand. But what God says is, He says, look to me. Look to me. James chapter 1 verses 2 through 4 says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, with knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking for nothing. Patience. Sometimes the trials that we go through, we're going through them to make us faithful. Sometimes in the church, we don't like trials. And sometimes in our own life, we don't like trials. And we like everything to be status quo. But God is saying this, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall in various trials. Now, I wish I was a very mature individual. And I would say, good, I get another trial today. I'm excited. You know, I, I, I go through trials, I say, ah. Oh. Again? Really? That's when I have to understand. I'm not walking by sight. I'm walking by faith. Because the testing of my faith, the testing of my faith, am I watching the tangible or am I living for the eternal? It says, verse 3, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Now, I know this is going to be a stretch for you to imagine this. Okay, now, put on your imaginary glasses. Back in high school, I'm living my high school days, okay? You ready for this? The back a few years ago, I used to wrestle. I wrestled at 126. That was a little skinny guy back at about 100 pounds difference. But what, what, what we would do in wrestling is, the, I hated my wrestling coach. I thought his whole job in wrestling was to make us sick. Throw up in a bucket. That's what I thought he, there right, Spencer. Throw up in a bucket. That, I thought that's what his job was. So we had three two-minute rounds. And in practice, what we would do is we would stay out on the mat three, three two-minute rounds at practice. And, but every time somebody else would come in, they would be fresh. So you're wrestling somebody that's fresh for six consecutive minutes. And after you get done, then you go up to the stands and you have to run six laps. And then you come back and you do some other thing. I thought, this... I want to learn how to wrestle. I don't want to be in shape. I don't want to be sick. Plus, we had to cut like 15 pounds. I was in the high school locker room dryer, turning inside the dryer, turning around, trying to sweat. Anybody else had to do that? I mean, I've even taken x lax to get weight. I mean, I've done everything I could to get on weight. And I thought, why is this coach trying to do this? Why are we just totally exhausting ourselves? Until it's regionals. Until the last 30 seconds of the last round. And your opponent is dead. And you have power. And you can win. And I believe this verse is the exact same thing that we do with our physical life. Is we run with patience. The endurance because when the fight is going on, when Satan is troubling you, when you're under testing by God, if we have faith, we have confidence in him, we can stand the trials of our life because we have faith that God is going to be beside us. That is lacking for nothing. And the last thing is the persistent faith is always rewarded by God. A persistent faith is always rewarded by God. Have you ever experienced God's apparent silence? What purpose do you think you serve? Or what is he even trying to do? How will you view the outcome? How will you handle the outcome? Because when we're on our knees before God, and we're trying to serve God with faith, I can understand what I can see. I can understand my situation. But when I'm asking God to take over, I have to have confidence that he loves me more than I know. I have to understand that when I'm going through health issues, financial issues, child issues, he loves me. I have to have confidence in this. I can have my faith in that. Verses 25 through 28 of Matthew 15. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, Lord, Help me. He was just silent. He was distant. But she did not allow him being silent and distant to detour 
her willingness to fall before his feet and worship him. And because. But he answered and said, it is not good to take the children of bread and throw it to, to the dogs. And she said, yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs have crumbs which fall from their master's feet. That's a scenario back in those days. We are talking about, you know, what I'm feeding, I'm feeding for the Jewish race, but, but you're not ready for that. And she said, I'm just willing to take the crumbs that fall from your table. She had faith. And she was not allowing the lack of his communication to deter what she needed. Then Jesus said unto her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be so as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Persistence. When you need something from God, when you're going through a major issue within your life and your life is being tested, quit looking at what you can fix. Look at what God can do. Because we see what we can do and it's tangible. It's visible. It's physical. But faith is spiritual. Faith is God taking over your life. Faith always trumps mission in the face of God. Faith in God always wins. We've heard this many times. Why is God's timing so different for all of us? Sometimes he answers yes, and sometimes he answers no. And of course, sometimes he answers not yet. But I read a, I listened to a song from a great theologian. I think he's written many many hymns, uh, Garth Brooks, <laughs> unanswered prayers. You know, sometimes those unanswered prayers are just saying, stay faithful. Stay faithful. Because if I give you an answer right now, if I answer you yes, or I say no, sometimes that causes a lack of faith. But if I say, let me work with you a little bit. I don't want to give you an answer. I want to give you life. I want to give you hope. Sometimes those glasses that we put on are very dimly lit. The Bible says sometimes we see like a dark glass. And we see things going on, but we do not understand what everything is. Sometimes, yet, not yet, sometimes just means I'm working. I'm working on you. And get ready for this. I'm working through you. See, sometimes what we think is what we get is what God wants. But I believe when we have faith, it's what we give is what God wants. God wants our lives to be a vessel for Him to use in many different areas. And sometimes in our life, in our faith journey, when we do not know what to do, we take our eyes off ourselves and we say yes to God. And then we become the tool that God can use. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Not probable. It is impossible. And how can we ask God to do something through us when we on purpose are not pleasing him? When we are looking at the tangible, we look at what we can see, we look at what's going on in our life, and I can understand that. And if I fix this, this, and this, and the Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. We only get saved by faith. I didn't see Jesus die on the cross. I have faith that he was the son of God and he died on the cross for my sins. I have faith that he loves me. I have faith that I have a chance to go to heaven when I die. Why is that? Because Jesus loves me. Why is that? It's because I was broken. My faith journey was a disaster. And one day I couldn't do anything on my own. One day I knew I was dying and going to hell. One day I knew my life as I knew it was over. And I fell on my face before God and I said, Lord, I need you. Did I see Jesus in front of me? No. I had faith that Jesus loved me. I had faith that Jesus loved me more than I could do anything on my own. And when I got up from that knee, I knew that Jesus had saved me. I knew that my sins were forgiven, and I knew by faith, and the only way I was ever going to change, 
If I live my life by faith, not by circumstance, not by my happiness, and not what people think of me, but by faith. What does it mean to live your life by faith? My new, my new normal, my new normal is very difficult. It means whatever goes on, I have to see what God wants before what I want. What is God doing with me instead of what I'm doing to me? What does God want within my life? So I listed a few. And they're hard. Believe God even when I don't see it. Obey God even when I don't understand it. Give to God even when I don't have it. Persist with God even when I don't feel like it. Thank God even before I receive it. And trust in God even if I don't get it. Let me say that again. My new normal? Believe God even when I don't see it. Because faith is not what I see. Faith is what he is. And my faith is to honor him because he loves me. Obey God even when I don't understand it. You know, there's a lot of times that we don't understand why we're going through these trials and tests. But if I live by faith, it's not about the trial and the test. It's about am I faithful to him? Because if I'm faithful to him in the trial, he is going to deliver me through it. Obey God even when I don't understand it. Give to God when I don't have it. Why is that such a big deal? It's because I believe the giving aspect of our life is a deterrent to our faith in God because if I have it, I don't need God for it. And if I don't need God for it, I'm living in the temporary. I'm living in the physical. But when I say I'm going to live by faith, I'm going to live by faith in every area of my life. I need resources to live. But if I do not allow God to go through my resources and I give to him what he has asked, I cannot live by faith if I'm keeping on what I want. Persist with God even if I don't feel like it. You know, in many of our lives, we have stuff that goes on that we just don't feel good. We don't feel like it. We don't feel that I want to worship God today. We don't feel that we want to go to church. There's issues. So we need to be persistent with God, even if I don't feel like it. And thank God, even before I receive it. When I ask, I expect to receive. But when I receive it, I need to thank God in every area of my life. You know, sometimes God gives us all kinds of blessings within our life. Whether it's our health, whether it's our children, whether it's our resources, or relationships. And sometimes we just take those things for granted. And when we take those things for granted, we don't say, thank you, Lord. We just say, give me, give me, give me. But when we fall on our knees before God and we thank him for what he has given to us, it gives him an opportunity to bless us even more because we're living by faith and not by sight. And trust God even if I don't get it. I really want this. I really need this. I really desire this. But if we live by faith and not by sight, does he know what you need? Absolutely. Do we know what we want? Yeah. There's a big difference between want and need. Let me trust in him in every area of my life. Let me finish with this one scripture. For we do not look at things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Temporary. That means they're not going to last. Eternal. Which means they last forever. If we put our faith, our life, our existence in the things that are temporary. That means they will not be present in eternity. But if we put our eyes, our focus, and our love on that which is eternal, that means the things that are going to be burned up down here will make no difference in our life because our faith, our life, is based on faith 
And it's based on eternal things. That's where God wants our faith to be. And it's a daily issue. What am I putting my focus on? Am I putting my focus on me? Or am I putting my faith in him? The definition of faith. The Bible contains a clear definition. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. And the conviction of things not seen. It's a conviction. It's a purpose within our heart. That I have faith. That he loves me more than you love me. He wants to take care of me more than anyone else can take care of me. He wants to give to me things that I can't get from anyone else. He can love me. He can forgive me. And my eyes are not on the temporary. My eyes are firmly fixed on the eternal.